To launch a common assessment like a standards mastery check, go to Lessons Assessments, My Assessments, and you'll see any assessment at the top that's in yellow has been shared with you. It's likely a common assessment that you need to pay attention to. Here we see this is a standards mastery check. I can even see the start and end date. You may want to preview so that you're ready to assist your students with different question types. So in preview mode, first of all, notice we've got a different tab, so we'll be able to just close this when we're done previewing. But here we can see what students will see. This is a hotspot question where they click on the hotspot. We've got other question types, so these are pick lists, these are fill in the blanks. For example, you also have student work where the students will submit text that they type in. But you'll also notice you see these student tools along the top for you to review in this preview mode, but you'll make these available optionally as you launch this for your students. Uh, follow your leadership on what tools they would want you to turn on. A note about text-to-speech. You'll see text-to-speech here. This is going to be available for IEP and 504 students, depending on the demographic setting that's in All in Learning. But to see how this works, they'll be able to change the rate of speech. There's lots of voices they can choose from. To use text-to-speech, students will simply highlight the text that they need read to them. Mr. Lewis arranges all the desks in his classroom into six equal groups of four. So let's go ahead and close this out. Now we've gotten a good idea of what the assessment's going to look like for our students. Before we activate, let's look at one more thing. Under Actions, you'll see that you can print the key. If you're doing backward design and you need that key, then there you go. You've got it right there. But now let's go ahead and look at activating it. So we're going to choose Activate and then Post to Student Portal. And we choose our class. You can select multiple classes at once. Choose the class and click Start for Selected Classes. And now you'll see the settings options. We've set these to the most common default, so hopefully you won't have to change them very often. These are all the student tools that we saw. This one's important because you may have an IEP student. Maybe they're new on your roster. And some student information systems are not passing along that demographic to all learning. So your admins will go into that student and set that demographic setting. And you can turn this to no. So for now, that student would be able to access this. This one is also quite important because kick students out of assessment if they leave the assessment screen means that even accidental clicks outside of that browser tab will cause them to be kicked out of the assessment, requiring you to assist them to let them back into the assessment. Okay, I've got the settings that I like. Now I'm going to click Next. And I'm reviewing my settings. I like them all. Let's go ahead and activate this for the class. I click Activate. So I'm still sitting on the screen. If I had activated this for multiple classes, I would see all my class names here in green showing it's activated for them. But I want to go in and monitor progress. So if I click on the class name, it's going to open up my grading screen. I can see the progress of each student here. This student, for example, has answered five out of the 13 questions and they're not finished. Here's an important note. If a student is still working on their test, you won't be able to do any manual grading. However, you will have the ability to end their test by clicking End Student's Assessment. This will keep them from making changes after you've graded. Now to look at the student who has finished, but it's red showing that there's at least one question we need to look at, or if you know you need to look at student work, you do so by clicking the hand icon. And now I can see everything that they input. Here, the correct answer is Dallas, and we see their student response says Dallas, and they got it correct. I can decide to mark this correct or incorrect. This is a question that's a writing prompt, so I can view their work here, I can view the rubric, and I can score them. This is a constructed response graded with a slider. This is a hybrid TE question, which was scored automatically. And finally, this question doesn't appear to have been answered. And sure enough, they did not submit any work, so we're going to let them be counted as incorrect. Of course, we have many other question types, but the ones I've covered here are the ones that might have constructed responses you want to look at. And now I can see the student is green because it's finished. Once I've scored all my students, I can go down to End Session, and this will generate a report. But I don't have to end the session now. I could leave the session active and come back to it later. So the session is still active. 
when I log in, I'll be able to see all the active sessions that have not been ended yet. The reason we put this here is this is one of our common technical support questions. Someone will contact us and say, I activated this assessment, all my students are finished, but I can't find the report. It's because it's still active. So we show it here in this little convenient panel, and in order to go and close it out, I'll click Activate, and that takes me back to the grading screen where I'm getting back to it. And here I can go ahead and do any final manual grading that I need to do, and then end the session. And now I'll be able to go to Reports and see the session there. Click on those sessions. Immediately you see the proficiency, sort, group students. I'll be able to look at the non-proficiency by standard, which is very helpful for students and to see what they need to work on. You can post to the student portal. I'll also be able to see the item analysis that just details every one of the responses. Let's me quickly identify why all these students answered C. Maybe I've got a distractor there that I can cover at the end of class. And one final note. In your Reports tab under Sessions, you'll see Actions. Those of you that are using PowerTeacher Pro will have a Export to PowerTeacher Pro button. You can just click that and it will automatically export it to PowerTeacher Pro for you. And if you use a different grade book, we can probably export to that too. Of course, the support button is always helpful. We have articles on almost every subject you might need to know and live chat during school hours with a very quick response time. Don't hesitate to contact them. They're fantastic.